What is what is up, Badger fans? We have arrived at the last therapy session of the year. So if you've been with us for the entire season, God love you. If not, welcome aboard. Um, the Badgers do finish off the season with a win. We're going to talk about it next on Locked On Badgers. Uh, get into game balls, MVPs, and whatever else we want to talk about today. It is late on the East Coast, but we are here for it. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I am your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the last therapy session, listen, we started, uh, It feel, this season feels like I don't even know how to describe it, right? I'm going to bring in Justin and Rasheed. It feels like it's been two seasons combined. Um, let's do Justin here. Let's get Rasheed in. You know, I, re I remember vividly the therapy session against Washington State, which to me feels like a decade ago. <laughs> like, it feels literally like a decade ago. That was and not I, a happy I think I kind of like, what happened here? You know, something like that. But it feels so long ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, it feels like years in Badger fans' life <clears throat> that – you know, has come across in one season. Like this has been, God, thank God it's over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is a tough one. I mean, that, I've had enough of this season. Like I want to, I want the optimism of a off season hearing about how great the strength and conditioning program has gone. Hopefully getting some massively good reports from spring ball at how things are looking. And then Nick Evers looks like he's going to be an absolute beast in this offense. Yeah. I, I just want the positivity. I think it's time to turn a corner. Yeah. yeah. It's time to turn a corner. But at the same time, look, I, I say this every year. I, I've said this many times. This is uh, – I love that Wisconsin takes these bowl games seriously. A lot of teams yeah. don't do that. And it leaves us at the end of the season with something on a high note, right? This season was rough. Well, at least we just won a ball game, right? At least we beat a Big 12 team. We showed up. We had a back and quarterback who, frankly, none of us really wanted to see. And we got we to you know, be happy about that and just understand that, you know, it's nice to see our team win at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, what was on it? We talked before the game, right? We did our, our giveaway. And we talked about how important it would be to get Jim Leonard, to, to have Jim Leonard go off with a win, to end the season yeah. with a win. And that happened. Like, it, and to some degree, it happened in – I put it in the Discord too. Uh, it happened in a very – it felt like a very fitting way, a very apropos way to end the Paul Christ era, right? You run for 260 yards. You control the clock. You almost give it up in the second half because you get too conservative. You don't score on the last drive. You, you die at like the three-yard line. It felt like a Paul Christ game. It's a great way to end the Paul Christ era in a weird kind now of – exercise the crap out. <laughs> Just to, it's done, but and we won. We won. This is not like a great Badger team. So we we won the bowl no. game. It it is what it is. It was uh, a, it's a power five opponent. It's Oklahoma State. They had a they had a rough, about the same kind of season we did. At one point, they were like six and one. I mean, so listen, we beat it. We beat now. They've lost a lot of players. I get that. So have we. But you know, it's it's okay. It's it, we did exactly what we were supposed to do. Did it? Was it pretty? No. We're gonna get into it. But a win's a win. But nothing was pretty this year, right? So then we were talking about that pregame. Like, this th this is what this team was all year. Inconsistent. It is what it is. Played down or up to their yeah. opponents for the most part. Like, this yeah. is who we were all year. So it is what it is. Let's our, do our, tag, our, our tagline for this season was Wisconsin football 2022. We make easy things look hard. Yeah. We've been doing that for a hot minute. Let's do some game balls. And then we're going to take a lot of comments and maybe do – a little final thoughts on this, trying to put a bow on it, but let's go around the horn. Let's do, um, let's do, I don't know if we want to do defense or offense, but just Justin, give me, we're going to do some game balls here. Give me a game ball for you from this game for the Badgers. I, I would say the running game in general, the, the two backs, Malusi ran hard. I thought Braylon was pretty good, but mm -hmm. that, I mean, that was our calling card in this game. I mean, I think you got to give it to Braylon Allen, right? I mean, the guy at 116 yards, he looked really good. And I think along with that, let's also throw some love to the offensive line. Uh, without Joe Tipman, who really kind of anchored that that line, um, and we lost Fernie for a little time, a little bit of a while, he came back. But I thought the guys up front blocked pretty well. 
Um, you know, they, they, they did, they got good push. And when, when we can consistently get those third and one, fourth and one plays, it's nice to see that we ran into a little bit of problems with that this year. Yeah. So I thought the line played well. Um, but defensively, I mean, I, I really, I just, I feel like I got to give credit to the D line. Um, coming into this game, that was my biggest question mark is what we're going to do without Keanu Benson. And they did pretty well. I don't have the stats for me. I'm trying to load it up and I can't get it, but I don't know how many yards we gave up on the, on the ground, but I think we did pretty well. And, and, and Paez did a nice job and, and Mullins and, and, and the linebackers. And so I really, th- I really like the way that we stepped up in the absence of Benton because that could have really derailed things up front. Did a nice job. You know, Paez shot the gap a couple of times. He, yeah, he, he did efficient a couple of times, which mm-hmm. um, one of which was on the J shot interception, you know, Paez was right in there again in the second half. Paez had a nice play. I would say game ball is chase Wolf. Like I, I get, that most people want to see Miles Burkett. I wanted to see Miles Burkett, but listen, I'm also just uh, I'm I can root for the fact that a guy who's been in the program his entire career got to start a bowl game and was for the most part outside of a horrendous interception, <laughs> uh, just a terrible. But outside of that, for the most part, he was pretty solid given what he, he was. was. He was yeah. accurate. He threw yep. the ball accurately, and he had, he really has a bit of a laser on that thing. He can he can yep. pinpoint that. And we mentioned uh, for those of you that were on the Discord during halftime, Justin and I were talking a lot about this and. I feel like, you know, when he's playing against man defense and he's just he's got a guy that he can see that he can lead out there, he will be accurate. But he has a really hard time reading defenses and reading zone. And, you know, that's what happened on the interception. And that's where it gets really dicey with Wolf. But we're not going to see him again. Give the guy credit. He, you know, he did play well enough tonight to win. So, you know, congrats on that. We've seen way worse quarterback play. <laughs> oh, right. So, yes. Well, the fumble yeah, wasn't his fault. He got blindsided on that. He was looking mm-hmm. the opposite side and somebody and they missed a block. Like that happens all the time to even NFL quarterbacks. When they're looking to the opposite side to throw and nobody picks up the man, it happens. You guys got any more? I guess let me get into another one. I got another game ball here. Oh no, I get, you guys got are we gonna more? go defense? Because I, um, I got one for defense. Yeah, I'm minor just defense. Take it so, yeah, minor defense. I'm gonna say the transfer quarterbacks. Quite frankly, who mm-hmm. we we been a little hard on this year, you know, Shaw and Dort. I was, yeah, I was gonna say Dort, but both of them. Had Hopefully, he's game. okay. He was really yeah. hobbling. He took after a shot that. there, but that he was did. a big time play. Um, and Shaw also, listen, Shaw also had a, a turnover on a really nice play right mm-hmm. after he missed the tackle on in the open field. But you know, the transfer cornerbacks had two turnovers today. Um, Dort's play specifically was a, a great defensive play. Got on top of the receiver, great hands catch. Most cornerbacks dropped that ball. So um, game ball for both of them, two turnovers in a seven point game. That's, that's enough to swing it right there. And, you know, again, they, I don't think the secondary was what we hoped it would be this year, but they, they did pretty good today. They balled out and quite frankly, Torch, Torch should have had a, another one. They should have had his mm. third this year, but uh, I thought the secondary played pretty well today for the most part. Uh, Oh, yeah, I mean, I would say um, I want to give a little bit of defensive credit to Jordan Turner. I thought he had a nice game, um, eight tackles. I think he led the team in tackles. And I was looking up the stats. It is 52 rushing yards, by the way, that Oklahoma State had on 26 attempts. I mean, so a lot of credit up front to the guys, with again, without Benton. But, yeah, Jordan Turner and um, Jung Mehta, they kind of both stood out to me. I really, really like Jung Mehta. I thought I think he's just going to be a stud, um, like his speed, like his energy. Um, and I also will say, I, I know we're just talking about defense, but I also want to go to special teams for a minute. Um, I think v- Vujanovic, I, 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 I know, <laughs> gosh, when you get announcers that haven't watched this play all year, I really feel like, um, you know, Fickle was maybe coaching the special teams. I think he might've actually I think he been was. doing that. And you can kind of see that you can kind of see him going and talking to some of the players before special teams plays, but the fake punt was great. Uh, great play call, very situational. And yeah, I mean, um, God, the, what, now I can't even say the, the damn thing. Vujanovic. Vujanovic. He, um, yeah, he punted the ball well. We're going to miss him. Special team yeah. shout out to them as well. Mm-hmm. Really quick, Bo Dragon. That is that is not remotely true. You know that's not true. I know you he's, like trolling me sometimes. He's trolling. That is not yeah. remotely true. Bo Dragon says Wolf was literally the worst quarterback I've seen in a Wisconsin uniform going back 40 years. I love you, man, um, but you know that's not true. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, come back, and then we're going to get into your comments next. We got Justin Rajiv, therapy session uh, for the end of the game, or end of the year bowl game. So we're going to get into your comments next on Lockdown Badgers. Take a quick break here. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at uh, Bet Online. 
Bet Online has you covered this year with all your props, lines, um, everything you need to have fun with doing a little bit of gambling online, but doing it responsibly. Always do it responsibly. But it is the place that we go to with our live in-game betting. It's the place we go to with um, all of our futures betting. I bet with my heart. I've talked about this a ton. Um, but, you know, it's it's a lot of fun if you do it responsibly. I still have the Niners win the Super Bowl. I have the Suns going to the finals. I don't know if I think either of those will actually happen, but I have fun with it, and that's the point. Uh, ben Line also has you covered with every sport you can think of, from golf to esports, NASCAR, hockey. It's all there on Bet Online. Uh, ben Online, where the game starts. Grab your mobile device to hit, learn more about the trends and actions. Ben Online, where the game starts. And I just want to say thank you again, man, for everybody tuning in. It is late today. I'm noticing I can see myself on YouTube. I have glitter on my face from our wrapping presents or just our presents that we're cleaning up from Christmas. So it is late. We are here to talk about it. Bring Justin and Rajiv back on. Um, let's take some user comments, guys. Um, present there wrapping, are, huh? There are a ton of present them. wrapping. There, there's a lot of um, there, yeah. there's a lot of in the comments. There's a lot of people that actually think Wolf did not have a good game. Bo Dragon's really committed to his thought here, but I gotta say, I mean, can can people really argue that he wasn't accurate with his passes? I mean, he was dropping dimes that our guys were not catching. Let's give the guy some credit. I mean, I I'm yeah, not necessarily I, saying he's yeah, a great receivers quarterback. Receivers didn't have he, a great game. He dropped he dropped the ball in amazing spots multiple times. And we did him no favor. So I, I really think Mertz had a good game and deserves credit for what happened tonight. I agree. Like, he, Keontes Lewis dropped a touchdown pass. Dean Ingram dropped a pass. A 30-yarder, like, yeah. You know, and, and with those drops, we're talking he was 16 to 26. Like, we've seen way worse games. We've seen we've seen Alex Hornibrook in, against Ohio State go, like, 5 of 21. Oh, with yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, so let's be honest here. Like, Wolf, if you were just statistically look at previous – uh, quarterback performances, he was fine. My and it's Chase standard. Wolf. He's our backup quarterback. That's yeah. fine. Like when you when you when you remember what it is, he is our backup quarterback. Who, frankly, none of us have liked the entire time he's been here. So mm-hmm. let's give the guy credit. There's a lot of people that, are, that uh, seem to disagree with that. I'm shocked, honestly. Yeah, a couple a couple comments. From, this one's from Daltry, but several comments about the turf. Um, that was pretty brutal. That was very brutal. Yeah, they're lucky nobody got a massive injury due to that field. Mm. That could have been really bad, given how terrible the field conditions were. Let's let's jump into this one because this one is something that I think we do need to talk about. Uh, Tom Nisa says uh, not playing Burkett at all makes no sense. I'm ready for longer ball. Uh, we probably have 30 comments in the chat at that deal with Burkett wasn't playing. I wanted to see Burkett. Um, Justin, let's kick it to you to start. Were you good with? I, I wouldn't even say the timeshare with Burkett not seeing any reps. I don't know if he's ready. And I don't. I think that any fan that's calling for him, unless you have you've actually seen him practice, like there's there's no no evidence whatsoever that says that he was ready to take over and start a game. We've seen him in a little bit of mop up duty in one game against a really bad opponent, and to say that we should be putting him out there just because he might be in the in the running next year, I I just I don't think like. To what end? Like, if he's not ready, what? so what does that do? Like, you, you see him play and he plays terribly. What if he would have went out there and thrown three picks? You know, then we watch him and we're like, oh, well, he's not going to be the guy next year. Like, what? I mean, I just don't think that there's anything great that you take can take away from it if he's not ready. I wanted to see Burkett play tonight like everyone else, but given the fact that it got a little bit tight in the in the in the second half there, I don't I didn't think we were going to. Had we gone up 31 to 7, yeah. I think we would have seen him, and I think rightfully so. And I would have been upset if we had not seen him in that situation. I but think we would have seen him then. But when they go down there and get fourth and goal and they get it's 24-14, and now all of a sudden our offense is looking a little bit anemic, you could think, okay, we'll bring Burkett in. No, I think at that point. You, you still want to win the game. He's been in there. He's played well enough. You give him, he gives you the best chance to play, to win the game right then and there, given the situation. So I'm not surprised we didn't see him and I'm not upset that we didn't see him. But had we been up by more, I would have wanted to. Yeah. I was disappointed. I'll just say, I think it's a missed opportunity. I, I was disappointed by it. I think you're right, though, Rajiv. I think in that moment when the game tightened up, it's been Chase Wolf's the whole game. That's not the time to bring Burkett in. But you're telling me, and I'm not saying you're saying this. I'm saying more to the coaching staff. You're telling me you couldn't have scripted up a series in the first half for a guy who is potentially one of your futures at the program. Like, I, again, he's 
he's a freshman quarterback, but you can't call two rollouts in a screen pass for him. I mean, maybe they don't him. see him as that. No, but that's I think that's garbage, though. I'm sorry. Like I, again, I'm not I'm not I'm not counting on you. I'm not saying that against you. I'm saying if you recruited him to be a quarterback here, you have to give him some reps in this game because you're you're seeing um, JT Seagreaves, Julius Davis. You're seeing all these young players. You can't find three snaps for Miles Burkett to get him some reps to start working for next year. I what, is, what is what what is what does three snaps do for him though? Real yeah. realistically, if you're gonna if you're gonna bring him in for like the entire second quarter, like Wolf in first oh, quarter, I, him for second quarter, and then second half play who's better, that would have been okay. But what are three plays really gonna do for him? Well, uh, three snaps. I mean a drive. I mean give him. Nah. Uh, ideally, he doesn't get just three snaps. Ideally, he has a drive or two. Like I feel like a timeshare made a lot of sense in my opinion to give a guy who. People in the program have, have talked really highly about yeah. came in, beat out Deacon Hill. Um, obviously, Deacon Hill's not a big-time player, but for a freshman dude, that is kind of impressive. And quite frankly, he's the only young guy on the roster right now that might factor into next year. I think it would have made sense to give him reps and see what happens. Um, but I, I agree with your point, Rajiv, as well, totally in the second half. When the game tightens up, you can't at that point put Miles Burkett in. Right, 100% agree there. I, I would have liked to maybe seen a t- uh, split in the first half. In the second half, just play the, play the hot hand and win the game. But – yeah, clearly, you know, Fickle and Leonard didn't want that, but um, you know, but yeah, I see, I see the, um, I see the points. Yeah, I, I, I mean, listen, and Justin's also correct. Like, we we're not in practice. Let's say the week or two prior to this, he has been atrocious in practice. Well, I mean, that that's a whole different story, and we we don't have that information. So um, that is a definitely fair point there. Um, let's see, we got a bunch more comments here. Let me see if I can find some that don't hit on a lot of the things that we've talked about. So there's several comments in here about second half play calling, fourth quarter play calling. Um, Rajiv, let me kick it to you there. This definitely felt like a kind of, again, we talked about it, a typical Wisconsin conservative game plan. Uh, at what point do you feel like Wisconsin maybe got away from being a little more aggressive and did it make sense to you? Yeah, up 24-7 is when you saw it. Um, I think I actually liked some of the, the play calling in the first half. I thought was great. Um, second half. Yeah. We just kind of tightened up and we started running in the line on first and second down in order to try to avoid a third and super long situation, which I understand the logic. If you can get four to five yards on the first two plays and you're putting yourself in a third and five, third and manageable, but that's when it got away from us. And then when you give the other team that kind of momentum, they go down and get that big play credit to them, that fourth and goal play. Now you're just playing on your heels and it showed and you could see the speed off the line that Oklahoma State had. They were ready for those plays. They knew what was coming. And I am so tired of seeing us run out of jumbo sets when we don't need to. We don't need to do that. When the first half, we didn't really do that. We spread things out a little more, and that created some more running lanes. And I don't know what happened. but So, yeah, I, I just think we got a little conservative. That was kind of that Ingram creeping in, that Paul Chris mentality creeping in. I hope that goes away next year. But we just don't need to do that. There's no reason we could have hit 31-7. We could hit 38-7 if we would have got conservative. So second half, really when it hit. I just feel like it was inconsistent. Inconsistent. Like you see a that bell sweep, which is such a well played, timely play. Even the even the bootleg, like we did, we discussed with uh, Wolf, where the, it got batted down. Like that was a great play call. It was. But then yeah. it's like every other drive, we're leading off with a run. Like I, I, you think that they're not ready for you to be running the football when you have six minutes left in the game. They know you're going to run it. You know, what would be great play action in that situation and, mm-hmm. and gouging them for 15 yards, put some pressure on them. Like if they have to make the choice, if you end up breaking off a 30 yard play and suddenly you're on their side, the pressure's back on them. Like we're, we're putting all the pressure on ourselves by like just teeing it up for their defense and saying, Hey, we're gonna run this between the tackles. Come stop us. I think the first play of the game was a was a pass to Braylon Allen out of the backfield. Great. I mean, that kind of stuff we could have done in the second half. And yes, I want to I want to be clear. There definitely were good play calls in the second half, but it's the first down play calls that just mm-hmm. it was way too predictable. When you get conservative, you get predictable. And we've all we've said predictability a lot on this pod this year, and that's what killed us. Yeah, it was just more of the same, right? It, it felt like we kept waiting for Ingram to break out of that, but that's really just who he is. Mm-hmm. And we had a comment early in well, the year. Well, that's why he got along with Chris. That, that's probably more, much more the case than we ever thought in the offseason. We thought he was brought in to augment, and really he was brought in because I think he's just that nature a conservative dude. Um, and he was just never going to get out of that shell. Like that, He didn't want to do it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it, I thought it got a little conservative. I, I get the conservative this 
when you're up 24 7 and you have a backup quarterback that is turnover prone though as well i think you know Rajiv, you kind of mentioned that as well i mean like i i I want to i want to stay aggressive because it's the bowl game too you know i mean i don't i don't want to be conservative but i I hear you i mean i mean we're watching oklahoma state rifle up deep shots the entire second half with a true true freshman quarterback but they also threw two picks which is kind of the point i'm making here like this is, and again, Rajiv, you and I have talked about this before as well. This this is a staff that has always treated every game like um, how much time can we squeeze out of yeah. this? How can we eat out the ugliest victory possible? And today was just another example of that. You know, I don't think any of us are surprised by it because we've seen it the entire year. It's just a philosophy. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I more prefer somebody who wants to play to win. And if that means being aggressive and taking chances, I think that there's something to be said for playing. I, to be fair, I think that's a big part of why we struggle with Ohio State because we don't play to win. We don't get aggressive and take risks against them. That puts them on their heels, and it bites us a lot. Like we've lost a lot of games under the Paul Chris regime where it was games where it's we shouldn't be playing this conservatively, and then it, something goes awry, and it's like, what the heck do we do now? Like we've completely handed them the momentum. Our offense is not ready to step back on the gas because we've taken it out of their hands. And now we have to somehow like wind it back up and get rolling again. And that's really hard to do. Like when you haven't been keeping the momentum the entire second half, you can put yourself in some really bad spots if things go sideways. Well, let's, let's wrap it up here. Um, Final thoughts on this, but any young players, any or not even I shouldn't even say young players, any players playing a big role next year that you know caught your eye today's game, whether it was Daryl Peterson all the way down to a JTC Greaves. Um, curious to see. I mean, J- Joe Bruner got in there. Uh, there's there's some young, young players that got in there that's always kind of exciting to see. I could see Bruner being back out there. I, I think that he's got some definitely at well, I mean, he's we know he's got talent. So mm-hmm. I think there's definitely the opportunity for him. Um, I really like how our lineback- our middle linebackers are coming together. They played pretty strong in this game. So I feel really confident about them heading mm-hmm. into next year. I have no clue what to expect from the majority of the rest of the defense. I mean, Waller looked good. Wall- Listen, Lower, uh, Waller, mm-hmm. I, I combined them. Uh, Waller and Latou, I called them Loller. But uh, Latou had a plan special teams where he just blew the gunner up, like his blocker up, ran through him, got down there, covered the punt. <laughs> or had a great tackle early in the game. That safety duo next year, along with Austin Brown and maybe Snowden or uh, Braden Moore, plus Blaylock coming back, who is going to be the starter this year, that is going to be such a physical group. So definitely um, seeing those guys flash in today's game just kind of confirms what we've been talking there. Um Rajiv, yeah, anybody else catch your eye in this game? Any younger no. players? Yeah, a lot of potential in the, in the secondary, but a lot of still question marks there with who's going to be back and who, how it's going to look next year. Um, <clears throat> I agree that um, the linebackers is what I was going to say. Um, and and specifically, I, w- I would say also in addition to that, I, I, I think the Bruner thing is good. But it was nice to see Seagreaves out there today. I, mm-hmm. I, I like seeing a little bit of that. And we want to see more of him. I was also excited that uh, we got to see a little Julius Davis <laughs> um, although not really, you know, in traditional running yeah. situations, he was more of a third down guy, but it was nice to see him out there. And I, I think there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of bright future that's, you know, that, that we have to look forward to. Uh, but defensively, I was a little bit worried that we were going to lose too much, you know, up front, obviously with Benton and, and, um, you know, and torch things like that. But I, I feel like we're, we're going to be in a good situation next year. We've got young talent that it's, there's got a lot of development left to happen, but a lot of good signs. All right, guys, let's let's wrap it up. Um, any last thoughts? Because we, we really are kind of putting a bow on this era, almost this entire era of college football for the bachelors, right? Everything I mean, is changing going into the next year. So I mean, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I I what I want to say is about Jim Leonard. You know, I think we've um he's what a great steward of our program. It's been here for a long time, played here, coached here had an unbelievable defense for so many years and it was great to see him, you know, finish things out. And I, there's so much excitement about next year. We're all, we've all talked about it. Um, But, you know, this era of Wisconsin football has brought us from nothing to multiple time, big 10 champion, Uh, you know, and I feel like that's kind of where things are, are, are taking us. And now we know what the next step has to be. 
We've got to go from multiple time Big Ten champion to perennial Big Ten champion, potentially national uh, championship contenders. So, but Jim Leonard, thank you for everything you've done for this program. Just, you know, I'm, I, I hope, I really hope he ends up going to the NFL. I think that's what he's going to do based on the timing of, of him not going somewhere else. And I just feel like, thank you for everything you've done and go be successful and hope to see you down the road. And for me, it's just, this is my, my, you know, time to be optimistic. We get the opportunity to see what's going to happen with the transfer portal going on. We get the opportunity to see, you know, what this roster is going to be morphed into with the off season here. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have a strong off season uh, workout with the, uh, the team. And then we can, we can get things going with Brady Collins and get things ready for spring ball. And hopefully we hear really good things out of the spring. You know, I'm looking forward to hearing some positive things about hopefully our passing offense, having some days where they, they, you know, bring it to the defense a little bit. You know, I want to hear more of these camp days where it's not the defense dominated again. The offense is really struggling to do something. I want to hear how, you know, they got carved up a little bit on a couple of days. Yeah, that would be a welcome change, right, from the past, like, seven years of – Yeah, no kidding. That's been a really practice. long time. Oh, the defense dominated again. You know, geez, they're really good. Or, And I'm, I'm mostly just I, – I feel like I'm in a really good spot to break off this relationship that I've had with that era of Badgers football. Like, I'm happy with it. I've – I've great memories from, from it. It was a health relationship for me. And now I'm ready to – to kind of get to the new relationship of Badger football, which I'm very excited for. I'm incredibly excited to see what Phil Longo, uh, Luke, our coach Fickle, this recruiting staff, an actual recruiting staff does. And I'm just really excited for it. And I also am very grateful for having 20 years of great Badger football, right? And it's not like I'm trying to bury the program, but really that era is over and we're moving into a new chapter. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm really excited to see what comes next, but we did wrap this up with a win. Um, the Badgers do finish seven and six, which it is nice to have a winning record. It is nice to win a bowl game. It is nice to be a beat a packed our big 12 opponent. Jim Leonard, as we've talked about, goes out a winner. So all of that is awesome. Um, yeah. One more shoot. thing to say and Minnesota, we're coming for you. Look out. I am just, I've never wanted to beat Minnesota more than I do right now with all this nonsense about PJ Fleck. Minnesota, we're taking the axe back, and you're not going to see it for a long time. That's it. My my breakup was different, Ryan. I'm I'm filing a restraining order against this Badger football. Wow, no, <laughs> this the clingy X can go away. I'm I'm done with the Paul Chris time, and I want there. it gone. I, I have friends who are fans of programs who haven't been to bowl games in in a long time. Oh, I'm okay with that so. aspect of it. I'm talking about the conserv ultra conservative. Mm-hmm. Let's sit on the ball. Let's let's run clock and be so proud of having a ten minute drive that has forty seven plays where one of them could completely blow it up. Well, let's do this because I think we're starting to ramble now because it is two o'clock for me, two thirteen for me. Justin, it's one thirteen for you. Regime yeah. is in his prime. It's yeah. like <laughs> he's like I'm gonna go watch the Late Show. Yeah, Regime's yep. on his prime. But I think me and Justin are starting to ramble, so we're gonna yeah. cut it here. Listen, there's a ton of content coming up still. We got uh, former Badger players coming on the show, um, more recruiting people coming on the show. I think a couple more recruiting recruit interviews coming up. We'll keep these these two goobers on the show. So there's a bunch more content coming up for sure. I didn't get to everyone's comments tonight, but on Wisconsin, they finished with a win. Let's keep it going, and uh, we'll talk to you all later. And Cowboy Chad 5X says, get our axe back. Well, that's a good comment to end on. Let's go.